Well, looks like I'm gonna need a knife. What have we got here? Look at this monstrosity. What do you think's gonna be inside? <gasps> it's gray. Oh, you know what it is? <laughs> uh, oh, it's dirty. It's making my workshop dirty. I'll allow it just this once though. If it's an inline six and it's a diesel, I can pretty much allow it. Yes, even if it's a BMW. However, this isn't a BMW. If you don't know what this is, I'm gonna tell you. This is a Cummins 12 valve. This is a 5.9 litre, uh, 12 valve, six cylinder Cummins diesel engine. In England, we got these in things like the DAF 45, the DAF 55. They put these in early JCB fast tracks, the fast tractors. Um, and they're really popular in America um, in things like the earlier Dodge Rams. I think the first and second gen Dodge Ram had 12 valve. Don't quote me on that. I've got a fourth gen, but that's got a different, it's got a common rail, completely different to this. But why have we got it in? You're wondering why on earth have we got this 12 valve Cummins in here? Well, it's because I'm developing a adapter kit for a customer. I had a customer contact me and say, I need an adapter kit to go in my Nissan Patrol. Will you do me one? And I said, well, uh, I kind of, I do have a patrol outside with a blown up engine. I might put a link to the engine blowing up. It's my own. Uh, it's a ZD30. I think it's quite a common thing and they want to put one of these in. One of these. Yeah. I'm gonna stick this on the scales and we'll see what it weighs. To be fair, for a, for a six litre engine, it's actually like not as big as I expected. There's like lots of crap bolted to it. It's got a ZF gearbox. I think this is a real like uh, favorite amongst your Cummins Land Rover people. I think they like to use that truck gearbox when they do Land Rover conversions. Some of those conversions, I can't quite get my head around. I mean, they're cool, don't get me wrong, a great big diesel in, in anything is a great thing, but there's something a little bit wrong about making a four-wheel drive vehicle two-wheel drive. In a lot of occasions, people do that when they install these in Land Rovers, and each to their own, you know, whatever, but I just, meh. Why not use a Dodge Ram or an old 50s pickup or, well, whatever, everyone has their own opinion, but. Right, so, yeah, maybe we can get it running later. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Get it fired up. Right, and if you're wondering what a Nissan Patrol is that I've described earlier that we're making an adapter to make it fit into, it's this beauty of a machine here. Well, sadly, <clears throat> I blew the engine up. Well, I didn't. I was towing a trailer with it on the motorway, which you would normally be expected to do with a four-wheel drive. And this particular vehicle has got uh, what's known as a ZD30 engine in it. And they are renowned for being pretty shit. And I was really like, I denied it. I was like, no, mine will be fine. I'm not going to tune it and it'll be reliable. I must have got 5,000 mile out of it after I bought it. And it just literally, it's cracked a piston and it's just running on three cylinders. So we basically need to fit that monstrous uh, Cummins engine into here on an adapter plate. And as we described, um, it needs to be, what did we say? 830, 800, 850 mil long? God knows. Well, if we just said, <laughs> if, if, if we said, I'm just trying to see where the back of the bell housing actually is, where the start of the bell housing is, sorry. I don't know, you could probably go up to about there. So if, <laughs> If we went to the very back of the bell housing, 850 would be here. So if you look like down on top of where I'm pointing, come a bit closer, 850 is here, which is like about an inch and a half back from the top of the radiator. The radiator leans back. So maybe, maybe it might fit without having to move the original transmission back. I don't know. Um, I don't know. There might be maybe some movement in the transmission mounts. I don't know. I haven't worked on one of these before, apart from a few little cosmetic bits and pieces that I've done to it. Um, hmm. 
I think it's going to be a tight squeeze. Whether it'll be the engine that I'll actually leave in my patrol, I don't know. Do I really need a six litre in it? No. Do you need a supercharged V8? No, you probably don't need that either. <laughs> but we do these things because we can. Um, hmm. Okay. Should I have said more about what a patrol is? About its super strong axles and its really strong gearbox? And... No. Right, so as you'll see from the time lapse, we've taken off loads of great parts. The bell housing, the flywheel and clutch system that were really heavy. <clears throat> the bell housing doesn't keep the oil in the engine. That's a separate oil seal, which I was very pleased to see. Well done, Cummins. I'm sure you feel really glad that I've given you that appraisal. You know, massive engine manufacturer needs my... Moving on. We took the ZF gearbox off, uh, that was heavy. That took two of us to lift it. Um, two big strong lads, you know, like myself. Um, we took the gear shifter off and we took off the exhaust and, and what else? What else did you take off? <laughs> uh, pipe oh, pipe, yeah, this pipe. Still a bit off, yeah. yeah, well, it's partially off. No, I'm not giving you that one yet. But look how much smaller it is. I'd <laughs> things. Top tip of the day, children. When you've got a rusty old nut and you need to get it undone, the best thing is two hammers. I don't have two hammers to show you. Um, ah, here comes, here comes another hammer. So what we're gonna do is one underneath, one on top. And trust me, that is mint. That literally will allow that fitting to fly off. This is where it doesn't fly off at all and we have to do like seven takes. Oh my God, it's unfortunately unwinding the whole thing, which is annoying. We need like, I think, I think I've got a really big adjuster. I don't know where the big Stilsons have gone. This is what happens when you work on like small engines for a really long time. All my big things, all my big spanners are at home. And they're no use there. They really aren't, but <laughs> you can't use a Stilson that way. Oh, there she comes. There she goes. Look at that. Look, look at that. That's very naughty. I think that might have been why it was so tight. We've got a bracket on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, 22, 22, 24, 22 under 24. Oh, uh, this has got a brass nut on it, which is nice. Ah, uh, that um, little bracket doesn't allow much clearance. Oh, the idea is you just bend it out over the spanner, it fixes it. Oh, do you know what I could do? I could just take that out. And that'll give me a load more room to spin my nuts. What else can we take off? Can you take off those bracket, that bracket there? However, that's fastened on. Another coolant pipe for the air compressor. Good old Cummins and the coolant pipes. On a, on a Volvo, on a D12, the compressor uh, water cooling has an actual rubber pipe that feeds it. 
Um, Volvo, being Swedish and referred to as one of the best diesel engine manufacturers in the world, who I actually used to work for for quite a long time, he used to have said water pipes go into the compressor fail on a regular basis. Whereas the Americans, they obviously went, I'm not going to do an American accent, but they went, let's use steel, and it worked. And obviously they didn't have the same issue, did they? <laughs> Theirs probably rusted rather than burst. Ah! Oh! <laughs> cool it in the mouth. Love it. Oh, we're nearly there. Those coolant pipes are rusty and horrible. I don't think we're going to be needing them. This might work. Oh, it did. Yeah. I think, don't quote me on this because I don't know, but by looking at that, excuse me, looks a bit like a cruise control module or cruise control actuator because it's got the cable going up to the pump. That's what I would say that is. Wow, they were slack for such big nuts. Who would have thought it? That one, not so much. It's actually really slack. I'm really impressed with this. It's either someone's taken it apart and put it back together badly, uh, or they just don't tighten them up too much from the factory. Right, so that's that. I'll use this 10 mil then. cable that goes to the big cruise control module thing. I think that you can clearly see at some point someone has done some dirty business with that. Wesley Snipes. That, that can go on the pile of awesomeness. We'll get into the Compressor now, and uh, what's this then? Power steering pump by the look of it. Or some sort of hydraulic pump. Yeah, I'd say power steering pump. Yeah, definitely power steering pump. I can picture a plastic little ZF bottle being sat there with a little dipstick in it. Um, right, so bolts to take off the compressor, just in case that don't impress her. 18 millis on the dillies. And luckily they've actually come undone. Been brought outside. I'm going to wash off the naughty doo doo uh, because I'm not working on it like that. It's horrible.
Wow, everything's nice and painted. Stop. But look at the sun. The state of the sun. It's like somebody threw it off of the Empire State Building. I'm going to get that bit there, that grease there, right in that corner. It's going to spray out. Oh, yeah. Revealed some colour and everything. Right, now it's clean. Let's go weigh it. It's like a brand new engine now. Out the way, piggy. So we've probably washed off 100 kilos. So what are you saying? I'm saying 410. Zero with the block. It might have to go upright. I've got a feeling it's pretty mid. Well, we'll see. Right, coming down. What are you guessing? I'm saying 410. 450. 450. What do you reckon? 370. 370. Who will be right? Wikipedia says 499. Yeah, I looked it up, but we've taken loads of stuff off. We have taken loads of stuff off, so. Here we go. This is the moment of truth. What does your 12 valve Cummins really weigh? Is the weight off it there? Hang on, hang on. Hang on, let me just back it up a little. What have we got? Bottom! Fuck! That is amazing. I'm victorious on the weight. Did I say 410? Did I say 410? I said four, I definitely said 410. <laughs> if, it, if I didn't, I'm going to edit it so like there's a really bad 410 over the top of the... Cool. Well, I don't think that's too heavy. Um, that means we probably took off about 100 kilos with that. Yeah, okay. So now we know the size and the weight of a six, uh, six, 12 valve Cummins. We just need you to do some magic. <laughs> I've got you this bit so we can do some measurement with it and it's got nice flat sides and everything, so. That should be good. And I think it has a spigot for this even. Are you gonna weigh it? Are you gonna weigh it? So what do you reckon? Bell I was in first. Oh wrong. Oh no, it's because the piece of wood, we subtracted the piece of wood. I didn't adjust that to make my measurement bang on, so that I won the twenty-six. Okay, and then flywheel. 56, so the flywheel weighs 100. <laughs> Joking, that was quick maths. That's 30 and that's 26. That's quick maths, ladies and gentlemen. Right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> right, a summary of this weaponry grade engine. 410 kilos is what it weighed with all the BS removed. Uh, the measurements without the bell housing and fan on. Overall length. 860 millimetres. Overall height, 780 millimetres. Overall width, without the compressor, so compressor removed and with a uh, rotary pump, not the, not the inline pump. About, including the turbocharger, 600 mil and it's off centre. So if you look at where the centre of the tape measure is, you're, you're sort of around the 230. Uh, the sump itself is about 170 mil deep, if you were to remove that or move it. It's a forward mounted sump. I believe you can swap this round. It looks about 50-50, so if you're thinking about axle placement, 
Um, according to this plaque, the standard engine is 107 kilowatt. I think that's 150 horsepower at 2,500 RPM. Uh, we know that this is a direct, a direct injection engine which runs cooler, more efficiently than indirect like the 606 we normally use. However, it's not as high revving. So, yeah, everything you needed to know about the Cummins 12 valve or in England, we call it the 6BT. Right, thanks a lot. Bye from me and bye from him and bye from Jonathan. Say bye, Jonathan. Bye. <laughs>